If you've never been to Morocco before, then you're in the right place. This is my most detailed video yet. In 10 days, I visited six cities with the travel company Experience Morocco, and here are my best recommendations. My plane was a bit delayed, so I arrived after everyone else. I had a quick check-in and then we were on the road again. But how gorgeous is this breakfast spread? The gem of Casablanca is truly the Hassan II Mosque. It's the second largest functioning mosque in Africa and the seventh largest in the world. We were lucky enough to take a guided tour in the mosque just after prayer time. The setting sun truly created a spectacular experience for us and it was almost like we were living in a painting. If you're lucky enough to be able to enter the mosque, removing your footwear is an absolute must. For dinner, we had reservations at one of Casablanca's most iconic locations. Rick's Cafe specializes in international food, and their menu is very diverse. The portion sizes are pretty generous, so be sure to order with your head and not your stomach. My trip to Casablanca was brief but eventful. In Morocco, different cities have different colors. This is the blue city. Can't you tell? It's relatively difficult to navigate with a vehicle through the alleys of Chepchaouen. Even though we had a private car, I think we underestimated how intense the drive was going to be given the length and the altitude. So we were so grateful to have a soft landing spot at Dar Jasmine Hotel. You can expect to pay anywhere from 30 to 60 US dollars per night for an accommodation that is equivalent. Book the same or a similar trip using the discount code WANDER ONWARDS with my trusted partner, Experience Morocco. Check the description for details. If you want to travel to Chefchaouen, your best bet is by bus or private taxi. It's about a four hour drive from Fez to Chefchaouen and a bus ticket will cost you anywhere from seven to eight US dollars. Let me show you the beautiful city of Chefchaouen. Now I hope I don't do the beautiful city of Chichaouen disservice when I give you this explanation. So apparently this is one of the original Jewish cities in Morocco and at some point they needed to leave Chichaouen to go pursue greener pastures elsewhere and they actually bequeathed their land to their neighbors and friends. So as you can see, there's a lot of background noise here. You can hear the livestock, you can hear the hens and what are these called? Roosters! <laughs> The city of Chefchaouen is still very much a traditional Moroccan city where many of their locals make the predominant amount of their income from tourism. Obviously the pandemic hit this incredible city quite hard, but as did the rest of Morocco. Morocco has a huge amount of their GDP dependent on tourism, so I encourage you to bring your money here and enjoy the beautiful city of Chefchaouen. Chefchaouen is a relatively small town in comparison to Fez or Marrakesh. Perhaps the best use of your time is to wander the streets freely, take pictures, and do a little shopping. Plus, you definitely have to do a full sit-down meal. After all, there's no bad food in Morocco. I'm in the incredible city of Fez. Now this is not my first time in Fez, nor is it my first time in Morocco. So this is actually my favorite city in the entire country. Fez is particularly known for its food, 
artisan culture, and lively nature. When you're coming down to Fez, be careful when you're in the souks and trying to buy local Moroccan artisan goods, because many of these goods are actually made in China. If you're looking for artisanal goods in Fez, I got you today. Welcome to Fez. This was our gorgeous Riyadh, which sat in the middle of the old town. When you're in Morocco, I would encourage you to stay in a traditional Moroccan guest house or Riyadh instead of a hotel. This will directly support small businesses and you'll have an authentic Moroccan experience. So we came up with this kind of what you call Islamic geometric design that was first inspired from the Persian and the Roman architecture. This may be five, six kilometers. This clay is very rich with magnesium and iron. Mm. You can use for mask face, you can use for tilt and for massage. First agent, he make the clay with the water. After he mixed by feet and by hand. With this clay, the artist, he make pottery or make square tiles for to make mosaic. So in Marrakesh, in Casablanca, in Asafi, in Sali, in Rabat, you have another clay, is terracotta. And terracotta is not the same. Terracotta, terracotta you can cook maybe three, four times because after crack. About greatly you can cook forever. So the boys and girls come here in 15, 16 years, stayed here four years for apprentice. Oh, wow. For to make one special light. Great okay. olive is fuel, it's combustible. Imagine this is your house, how could you get any furniture into your house? So for us, living in the Medina of Fez, we we'll always remain a good relationship with our next door neighbors. This is not for pasia, but this is for what we call it refisa. So it's used for refisa. Refisa is mixed with fenogreek. Fenogreek, our ladies, when actually delivering a baby, they believe that fenogreek gives them like strength and helps milk production. Not only dyeing used clothes, if you have like a beautiful nice shirt that's got like a stain, bleach or anything on it, you cannot get rid of that. You bring it here and they can change the color for you or keep it in the same color you have. To fix the color, they use alum stone and vinegar and they believe this actually will fix the color. Book the same or a similar trip using the discount code WANDER ONWARDS with my trusted partner, Experience Morocco. Check the description for details. Moroccan food culture is unlike anything I've seen before. As a complimentary appetizer, most Moroccan restaurants and homes will serve a smorgasbord of small bites to enjoy. Try not to get too full before your main course. The house here, this is a 14 cent. And all the details you can see from the walls, the floor, the ceilings, whatever, it's all as the house has been like 700 years back. Besides, of course, the furniture, which is more recent. Yeah. You can see how just very beautiful. Each time I open, I open a bag. It's actually made for little kids. Aww. When you say little kid wearing this, that means the kid is going to get circumcised. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Really? Come here to donate some money. Mm. Put the right hand and make a wish. Mm. Believe it or not, it actually it works. <laughs> but you are not allowed to share your wish until it comes true. Near acid, which is harmful to the environment, so they will be using pigeon droppings. So inside it's a little bit smelly, not because of the pigeon droppings, but just the hides. Mm -hmm. And because they have to sit in the ink pot for a long period of time, so it's smelly a little bit. Once you get there, I'll make sure to get you peppermint or spearmint mm -hmm. to be used, to use it to offset the okay. awful smell for the foul smell of the, the tanner.
Fez is easily my favorite city in Morocco, and I hope you can see why. On our way to Marrakesh, we stopped to take refuge in Rabat for a night. I had no idea what to expect, but I was excited for the adventure. Wait, guys. We're in Rabat. Before we arrived in the city, we stopped at a woman's weaving cooperative. Here, we took lunch and learned a few things about traditional Moroccan textiles. Nizala specializes in bringing economic opportunities to rural women in Morocco. To support their cause, we enjoyed a sewing lesson with a cultural lesson about the history of textiles and special patterns in Morocco. Stitching these intricate patterns were pretty tough. It's safe to say that I shouldn't quit my day job. After the sewing lesson, we got to enjoy an incredible meal fit for a queen. Even as a group of eight, we barely made a dent in the amount of food that was served. If you are enjoying this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to get notified about new videos. Moroccan hospitality is unparalleled. If you're lucky enough to receive an invite into a private home, you should jump at the chance. Welcome to the white city of Rabat. So Rabat is actually the capital of Morocco, and this is where the government and the king lives. It's right on the ocean front, it's beautiful, and it's actually one of the safest cities in Morocco. Don't be afraid to venture around the city during the daytime. The winding white and blue alleys are beautiful, and you'll see plenty of opportunities to grab a souvenir along the way. Rabat is not necessarily as popular as Marrakesh is for tourists, but it's definitely worthwhile to visit. You'll get the same opportunity to enjoy Moroccan culture and food, but without the crowds like in Marrakesh. While we were in Rabat, we stayed in the old town at this beautiful Riyadh. Riyadhs in Rabat tend to run from 30 US dollars to 50 US dollars an evening. So even if you have a tight budget, you'll still be able to find something beautiful. As we only had one night in Rabat, we decided to have dinner at the sister restaurant of our Riyadh. We loved the generous starters, and the meal averaged out to be about $12 per person for their entire meal. So we just drove in from Rabat. We are now in the red city of Marrakesh, and we're gonna down this so we can make it to the garden to see all the beautiful plants, before then going to a workshop, before then going to a hammam. So, busy day here in Marrakesh, but we finally made it. This was the first time I'd ever been to the gardens and it definitely didn't disappoint. There was very much a luxurious oasis vibe to the gardens and it was interesting to know that Saint Laurent, an openly gay man, restored the gardens with his life partner in a predominantly Muslim country. That's the thing with Morocco. It has such a rich cultural and religious background that you never really know what to truly expect. This was our gorgeous hotel in the city center of the Old Town. It was built by combining different riads into one building, so be sure not to get lost. So we're getting ready for hammam now. We are getting a 45 minute hammam, which is a Turkish bath. Uh, where they scrub you very intimately and then we're doing a massage as well. I want them to beat me up because <laughs> your girl is stressed. For 20 to 50 dollars you can get your whole body scrubbed and bathed intimately in Morocco. 
There is a culture of hospitality when it comes to food that is unlike anything else in the world. When you're in Morocco, be sure to pace yourself with the complimentary appetizers that come with your meal, otherwise you'll never be able to finish anything. Meals are relatively affordable in Marrakesh, and I would expect to pay anywhere from 10 US dollars to 20 for a dinner. While we were in Marrakesh, we were able to do a private cooking class to learn how to make a traditional tagine. We also got to enjoy a cultural presentation before we got into the kitchen regarding the spices and how to use them. Today we're going to do a cooking class at our wonderful hotel, La Maison Arabe, and we're going to be making a tagine today, so let's hope we don't screw it up because we do have to eat it later. Join us. And now we'll continue cooking and adding um, the protein portion of our meals. I'll see you in the next shot. Book the same or a similar trip using the discount code WANDER ONWARDS with my trusted partner, Experience Morocco. Check the description for details. Today we are at the beautiful city of Marrakesh. So Marrakesh is known as the Red City in Morocco, but many of the palaces have the traditional blue tiled vibe that we're seeing here. So in this palace, this is actually a women's palace. Um, it was for the wives, no men allowed. And then this is actually the concubines foyer. Uh, not really sure what this is, but it's beautiful. Here's a little shot of it. Now, to become a concubine, it was actually a great honor, according to our guide. Um, women would compete in unknown ways to have the honor of being a concubine of the king who built this palace. Um, and it's really incredible to see that everything here is practically original. So all the tile, most of the ceilings, very few things have been replaced, but things have been uh, well kept over the years, which is why we have this wonderful place to enjoy. Not have three balls as you can see. So the biggest one, they are actually from pure gold, by the wow. way. So the biggest one, it represents love. Oh. The second one, it represents family. The third one, it represents Islam. And the last one, it represents peace, which means peace and love holds everything together. Everybody has ovens at home, but we prefer to bring our bread and pastries here to have the smell of the smoke of the wood. Because he bakes using the wood. He said, have a seat. <laughs> yes. So you can see that we have a hole over there. So that hole actually it fits over the 200 pieces of bread. So he doesn't uh, bake only bread, but also pastries, fish, which are the good food. And also fish, as you can see. Oh, wow. That's wow. sardines. <laughs> yeah, fish. And he's actually, uh, he's actually like about the fifth, uh, five generations that uh, used wow. to work this, uh, in the, uh, this oven. That's the so man cool. actually lives upstairs. So he stays here, he lives here, and then like he works here. Yeah, so all his life is here. Argan tree, mm -hmm. name at home, Moroccan oil. It's very popular.
I hope you fell in love with Marrakesh as much as I have. I continue to come back to Marrakesh because I feel so alive here. We are in Essaouira. So Essaouira is a port city in Morocco. It's filled with luscious art, culture, and cats, most importantly. So today we'll be walking around the city, showing you the different furrows and along the streets. And I'll be showing you a very special Game of Thrones shooting location, so stay tuned. A lot of local people, they prefer to come to the port and then they buy their own fish from the port and they take it home. They, do, they don't have to go to the market and get their fish from there. So the city is very known as well by Game of Thrones. Oh, oh. Yes, because they have filmed the Game of Thrones over here. We're going to see the huh. place where they have filmed their show. Like that you see, they are a pure creation of the person who does the job, but these kind of symbols in the past, they can even tell you about the region or even the tribe from which, you know, this design comes. Thanks for watching! If you liked that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.